All right, so let's get into the actual spec overview. Uh, so this is a diagram of uh, sort of what, what DMARC looks like out in the wild. I'm going to talk through it really quickly. Uh, and then we're, we're going to go into each of the individual parts of it in uh, more detail. So you have a big, uh, the big cloud there labeled the internet, where all good and bad email comes from. And the arrows coming into the box in the center are aligned and unaligned mail. <coughs> See the green is the aligned mail and the red is unaligned mail. Aligned and unaligned are terms you're going to hear a lot in this training session. It's sort of a core DMARC concept, and we're going to go into a lot of detail on that. Um, what DMARC is testing for is, is that email aligned or not? So when the mail arrives at an inbound MTA that enforces DMARC, first it checks SPF and DKIM. It does both of those as normal as any other MTA would. Second, check, second it checks for DMARC identifier alignment, and then it takes potentially takes action on any unaligned mail it finds. So that DMARC identifier alignment check involves uh, reaching out to the DNS server of the domain that the mail claims to be from and checking for a DMARC record. And if it finds one, then it proceeds with doing identifier alignment. And if the mail is found to be unaligned and there's an action requested in that DNS record, then they take it. That might be quarantine the mail or it might be reject it. Regardless of what action it takes, it'll do some reporting if it finds a DMARC record. So it might send, in the case of a failure, a real-time forensic report back to the reporting address listed in the DNS record. Or it might just save that data to generate an aggregate report for that sending domain uh, later that day. All right, so now we start getting into sort of the nuts and bolts of this. Um, identifier alignment, as I said before, is kind of what DMARC is all about. It is the layer that we are adding on top of DKIM and SPF. And it is the test that we are performing to decide uh, whether this mail conforms or not. So the way this works is the authenticated identifiers in the email are compared to the domain and the RFC 5322 from header field. Uh, we chose this because it's the address that most often users see, right? SPF concerns itself with the domain given in the mail from command, but users never see that. Uh, DKIM can be any old domain that signs it, you know, an email can have multiple DKIM signatures. So we felt that it was important to kind of pull everything back to the domain that we are showing to users as being where this mail is actually from, because that's what most users go off of, and that's what most MUAs will show the user. So everything has to align to that domain. Uh, only one authenticated identifier has to align in order for the email to be considered in alignment. So you have a couple of options when you're deploying your system in how strict or relaxed you want people to be when they're making that alignment check. Uh, we have what's called relaxed which is the default, which means that the organizational domain, which is another core DMARC concept that I'll discuss in a minute, the organizational domain of, in SPF's case, uh, the mail from, has to match the organizational domain of the from header, which again is the one the user sees. And in the case of uh, DKIM, the organizational domain of the D equals value in the DKIM signature header has to match the domain in the from header. OK, so the organizational domain. Uh, this is a, a notion that we came up with to allow a lot of use cases that are already out there in the wild that have caused problems with previous attempts to roll out this kind of technology. Uh, the notion of the organizational domain is the top level domain plus a single atom. Uh, it's usually the, the domain that's thought of as the brand, or as uh, you know, the, the registered domain. Um, so for an example like groups.facebook.com, uh, the organizational domain would just be facebook.com. In the event of something like aol.co.uk, which is a country code top level domain, you would recognize that as a country code top level domain and the organizational domain would be aol.co.uk. Uh, and for a really long drawn out example like foo.bar.example.ne.jp, the organizational domain would be example.any.jp. 
So what this allows you to do is, um, if you are doing things like uh, bounce handling subdomains, that means that your mail from domain can be, you know, bounce dot, whatever the domain you're sending as, and with relaxed alignment, um, SPF will still be considered in alignment with the from domain, okay? So if you're sending as your, your brand, right, and you've contracted out to a third party, and for various things like bounce management, they need to use some subdomains, they can do that, and DMARC will still appear aligned, and that mail will still be delivered, you know, as it was normally, without DMARC having any negative impact on it. Um, currently, we are advising people to use a service called publicsuffix.org for a TLD list for calculating organizational domains. Um, that's part of the spec that's still kind of up for debate uh, because that list is not as comprehensive as we would like it to be and is maybe not as well maintained as we would like it to be for, for this to be a fully functioning spec. Um, so far, it's worked fine in testing, um, but we feel like in the future, we should future-proof this with something uh, more robust and hopefully we'll find something soon. We have a few thoughts, a few suggestions, but, but nothing that we're officially uh, telling people to use yet. So uh, in this example, we have a sample email header that demonstrates what we would call strict identifier alignment. In the case of strict identifier alignment, the domains must match exactly. So if you look in the header here, you'll see the return path domain listed in the authentication results header is example.com. The authentication results header indicates that SPF passed. It also indicates that DKIM passed. And you can see in the DKIM signature header that the D equals value is example.com. Move all the way down to the from header. You see that the from address listed there is postmaster at example.com, meaning that the domain that we're aligning to is example.com. So the three relevant domains we're talking about here listed at the bottom are uh, the SPF domain of example.com, the DKIM domain of example.com, and the from domain of example.com. And in this case, they are in strict alignment because they are all the same. Now, in order for DMARC to, consider, to be considered in alignment, only one of either the SPF or DKIM domains must align, okay? So if DKIM were to fail in, in this instance, this email would still be considered aligned according to DMARC, and no negative action would be taken on, on uh, the email as a result. Uh, if it, say, was forwarded and therefore SPF no longer passed, the email would still be aligned, assuming that the DKIM signature survived forwarding and still validated. Um, we do it this way, this sort of only one must pass uh, mechanism in order to address false positives. In previous research, it was found uh, that um, when you use the two mechanisms in an or fashion like this, you gain a great deal of stability and reliability and you lower false positives. Um, previous efforts to use just one or the other of these things often ran into issues uh, with people seeing misdelivered mail. Um, so this was one of the, the, the core parts of DMARC that we wanted to introduce to help people address that issue and be more confident when they roll it out. This is an example of strict identifier alignment where the email is not signed. It's very similar to the last example. If you look at the authentication results header, you'll see that SPF passed. And the mail from domain is example.com. And once again, the from domain is also example.com. So in this case, we have a single authenticated identifier provided by SPF, which exactly matches the from domain. Therefore, this email is in strict alignment according to DMARC. This is an example of DKIM strict identifier alignment. In this example, if you look at the authentication results, you'll see that the SPF result is neutral, possibly because this email was automatically forwarded from one service to another, and this is the second service to see it. In this case, the D equals domain is example.com, and you can see in the authentication results header that DKIM passed. Therefore, you have down at the bottom in the summary, DKIM providing example.com as an authenticated identifier, and the from domain, again, being example.com. They match exactly. Therefore, they are in strict alignment. Now, here's an example of email that is unaligned, according to DMARC. What we have here is a mail from domain of fish.com, as you can see in the return path header. As you can see in the authentication results, SPF passes. Also in the same header, in the authentication results, you see that DKIM fails, and the D equals domain was example.com. So the from header of example.com, we have a single authenticated identifier provided by SPF because SPF passed. 
However, that domain is not the same as the one in the from header. And since dkim did not pass, it does not provide any domain for us to compare against. Uh, therefore, we do not have a match between example.com and fish.com, so this email is unaligned. Depending on the action requested in example.com's DMARC DNS record, uh, this message would likely be rejected or perhaps quarantined if, if that's the action they've requested. Otherwise, it would just be delivered and we would include this in their report. So here's another example. This is potentially a false positive example. What we have here is a subdomain of foo.example.com in the mail from, in the return path header. As you can see in the authentication results header, SPF passes and DKIM passes. The D equals domain for DKIM is bar.example.com and the from domain is example.com. So we have here are cases where the authenticated identifiers are subdomains of the from domain. But because example.com has requested strict alignment, this email is not aligned. If they had selected relaxed alignment as their option, this email would be aligned because they all share the same organizational domain. Is that clear? Cool. All righty. Now let's talk about relaxed alignment a little bit. Um, we, we, we generally think that um, financial institutions and, and people um, like that probably are very interested in strict alignment, but for most organizations, relaxed alignment is, is probably good enough um, because they, they probably engage with third parties or, or perhaps have several different use cases of email going on that are already separated by subdomains. Uh, so the relaxed alignment option is the default. Uh, and, and it's provided to give uh, more flexibility and more ease of management uh, for, for your domain and your subdomains. So in this example, uh, this, this is an example of relaxed alignment. You can see in the uh, return path header that we have a subdomain, bounce.example.com, which passes. We have a dkim signature of bounce.example.com, which also passes. And we have a from domain of foo.example.com. So this is similar to the previous example where the alignment was strict and it failed. But in this case, it is passing because uh, the, the domain example.com has opted for relaxed identifier alignment. So even though none of the domains match exactly, they all share the same organizational domain, therefore they all align. Uh, same again with email that is not signed. We have SPF with bounce.example.com passing and a different subdomain, foo.example.com. Again, they both share the, share the same organizational domain. You have a single authenticated identifier, which is all you need. Therefore, this mail aligns according to DMARC. We have here is an example of DKIM relaxed alignment. SPF is neutral, possibly because this email was forwarded from one service to another. The DKIM signature provides foo.example.com in the D equals as its authenticated identifier, and the from domain is example.com. Once again, they share the same organizational domain, so the email is aligned according to DMARC. And here's our phishing example again. So in this case, the email from domain in the return path is fish.com. SPF passes. The email is signed by bar.example.com with dkim, which fails according to the authentication results header and it's from example.com. So again, we have a single uh, authenticated identifier provided by SPF since it's the only mechanism that passed with the domain fish.com, which has an organizational domain of fish.com. And the from domain is example.com. They don't match. They don't share the same organizational domain. Therefore, this email is unaligned. OK. Now we find out whether you've been paying attention or not. This is the audience participation part of the program. Um, since this is sort of everyone answering the same questions, I don't think anybody needs to be handed a microphone. Uh, you guys can just yell it out. I'm going to repeat your answers anyway. So in this first exercise, uh, I am asking if SPF is in strict alignment. I see a few people nodding yes. I heard a couple people say no. Let's move on. 
Uh, the answer is no, because SPF did not actually pass. It returned a neutral result. SPF has lots of different flavors of result. It's one of the things that introduced ambiguity and confusion into the spec. You have soft fail, hard fail, neutral, pass. As far as DMARC is concerned, pass is the only thing that matters. Anything other than pass is a failure. So in this case, if you look in the authentication results header, you'll see that SPF is listed as neutral. So therefore, this email is unaligned because SPF provided no authenticated identifier. So is the email aligned anyway? Ooh, whoops. I accidentally skipped forward too far. Sorry about that. So in this example, SPF is out of alignment, but DKIM is in alignment because it passed, according to the authentication results header, for the same domain example.com. So even though SPF failed, the email is still in alignment because it is signed. I will try not to double click. There we go. So in this example, uh, the question is, is SPF in relaxed alignment? Aaron, yes. Let's move forward. That is correct. 10 points to the audience. In this example, um, foo.example.com shares the same organizational domain as example.com and SPF pass. Therefore, the email is in relaxed alignment. Our next exercise. So here is DKIM in strict alignment. Heard a couple of no. Anybody want to go with yes? I don't think so. That's correct. Foo.example.com does not exactly match example.com. Therefore, it is not in strict alignment. Under what conditions would the email be aligned? If D equaled example.com? Well, assuming that this email can't be changed, what else can change to make this be aligned? SPF passed. Anybody else? If it was changed to relaxed. Very good. So since SPF in this particular example does not pass, it is neutral, uh, this email would only be aligned if relaxed DKIM alignment was allowed. Now, of course, if someone resent this same email and this time SPF passed, that'd be a different story. Uh, or if DKIM was signed with the exact matching domain, that'd be a different story as well. Okay, somewhat complicated example. Under what conditions would this email be considered in alignment? Can't? Why not? Hey, there we go. The answer is none. Neither DKIM nor SPF are valid in this case. SPF is neutral, but SPF must pass to return an authenticated identifier. And in this case, neither of them did. So assuming that DKIM and SPF were both actually valid for this example, under what conditions would this email be considered aligned? Somebody said relaxed, and somebody said if the return path was different. Relaxed is correct, or you could change the return path, that's true. If relaxed alignment was allowed for either DKIM or SPF, then this email would be aligned, uh, because at that point, one of the authenticated identifiers would align. 